Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Alright, so the Kamala clown show continues. Now, of course, it was only a matter of time until Kamala Harris was forced in a position to have to finally show her face. I know some people were expecting that Kamala would stay in the basement for the rest of the campaign season, but obviously, that would never be sustainable. Democrats are doing what they always do. They avoid any scrutiny, hiding as long as possible until the pressure mounts to where they feel they have to actually address the public. It's actually a repeat a trend. Go back to the summer of riots in 2020 when people were calling on the Democrats and specifically at the time the Democrat nominee Joe Biden to call for an end to the violence. It took over a hundred days for Joe Biden to come out and say something. Look how long it took them to visit East Palestine, Ohio. I mean, the list goes on and on. Democrats will try to avoid the public or try to avoid any situation that they deem non-beneficial to them for as long as possible until their hand is forced. And so now Kamala Harris's hand is forced. She has to address the people. She has to do an interview. And of course, again, in typical Democrat fashion, following the same MO, they're setting up this fake political theater interview and trying to pass it off as the real deal. It's obviously anything but it's as fake as it gets, and let's have a conversation about that. We got some stuff to get into. So let's roll the tape. All right, so the American world's been waiting, waiting for Kamala Harris to show her face. And finally they give in, but of course in the worst way possible. Kamala Harris schedules a sit down with Dana Bash, not in a one-on-one, -on -one, no, in a two-on-one -on -one interview. She brought her back up. She's bringing Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz along for the ride, essentially confirming what we've been saying that Kamala Harris is too scared to do a proper one-on-one -on -one interview. She needs the backup. Scott Jennings from CNN and reacts. Is there the, the line now going to be, well, why isn't she doing it by herself? Yeah, I, I do think people are going to bring that up. Look, I, I have great confidence in Dana and CNN to, to do this. I think it's incredibly weak, weak sauce to show up with your running mate. The fact that they don't have enough confidence in her to let her sit herself, the actual top of the ticket, and do a single interview. In fact, I think the hand wringing and the gyrations over this over the last month show a troubling lack of confidence in her political ability, which also makes you wonder as a voter, well, what kind of president would you be if this kind of a small time decision, can we do an interview or not? What does that look like for your decision making process? So on. So I, yes, I think Republicans are going to think it's pretty weak to show up uh, with a, effectively someone to take up half the time. I'm totally in agreement with our friend Scott here. Absolute freaking weak sauce. The whole thing, frankly, in my view, reeks. This interview was supposed to build confidence in her capabilities, but again, it's building on the same old narrative. You know, just the other day I played a CNN panel clip for you guys, where there was a prediction being made that Kamala Harris would likely do some softball interview moving forward. She's not going to take gonna tough questions. She's going to on a network and she's going to have a sit-down conversation. She has already said, her campaign has already said that that's going to happen. If you're waiting for the it's day, a everybody month. else is waiting it's for the day. It's a month. She's actually on the ground. She's doing bus tours across the state of Georgia. She is talking to the She's voters. She's the last the voters one in the are room. Let's make hear this decision. it. We're going we're gonna to have to take a break. I'm sorry uh, to cut you off, but uh, I, I do. I don't think that doing softball interviews is going to put this to rest. I, right. I, I understand the point that you're making, but I think the decision that I'm looking for from the Harris team is who are they choosing to sit down with? And is that going to be something where you come away feeling like she took the hard questions or if this you know, snowball continues. All right. And even the CNN host said, yeah, well, that probably wouldn't be too helpful to do softball interviews. And here we are. This isn't softball. This is T-ball. Vice President Kamala Harris has become a near ghost in the political landscape, ducking tough questions and hard conversations at every turn. For months, she's been absent, refusing to do real interviews, to engage with the media in any meaningful way, and to stand on her own two feet as a leader. But now she suddenly agrees to a pre-recorded interview with CNN's Dana Bash. Obviously, Obviously, this interview is going to be raising eyebrows for all the wrong reasons. Why now? And why choose Dana Bash? And why bring Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz along for the ride? Well, it's painfully obvious. She's scared. Scared of facing the music, scared of the scrutiny, and scared of answering for her abysmal record as vice president. This isn't about transparency or accountability, it's a staged appearance. A carefully crafted appearance, meant to avoid anything resembling a real challenge. I mean, Dana Bash, the perfect partner for this CNN kabuki theater, Dana Bash has a long history of partisan coverage. For the record, there is no well, evidence that Joe that? or Hunter Biden did anything and wrong. Let's move on. Let's move no on to the quote. Donald he certainly met the moment. We're hearing from some Republicans that it was too political. Uh, compared to what? Turns out even Jack Smith can't resist a $5 footlong. New and exclusive CNN video of the special counsel at Subway. I've spent time with Doug Emhoff. By the way, side note, I just have to get this in there because I love this. The video that played before his speech, narrated by their son, 
his ex-wife produced it. Right. <laughs> There's a lot for President Biden to tout. Americans don't seem to be giving him the credit. Three of the sitting justices were appointed by Donald Trump. Should any of the justices recuse themselves? And really, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, she's got connections that make her the ideal softball pitcher for this charade. Let's not forget her family ties. She was married to John King, another CNN figure. Her father, Stuart Schwartz, was a senior broadcast producer for ABC News. She's been swimming in the waters of the mainstream media bias her entire life, and it shows she's built a career where tough questions are reversed for Republicans, while Democrats get a free pass. Oh, and actually, mentioning Dana Bash's family connections, she's also married to an ex-intelligence official who just happened to be one of the 51 former intelligence officials who signed on to that Hunter Biden letter claiming it was Russian disinformation back in October of 2020. Nothing to see here, no bias here. It's so obvious what's happening. And if we look at the larger picture, I mean, it's not even really just about Dana Bash's partisan leanings. It's about this entire culture of political protectionism that has surrounded Harris since day one. When was the last time that she faced a journalist who wasn't already on her side? We've seen her laugh off legitimate questions. You're very different in the policies that you've supported in the past. You're considered the most liberal United States senator. I, I somebody said that, and it actually was Mike Pence on the debate stage. But <laughs> yeah, well, actually, the nonpartisan GovTrack has rated you as the most liberal senator. You supported the Green New Deal. You supported Medicare for all. She gets tough questions from these leftoid journalists. She simply laughs it off or gives some BS excuse. And then, of course, the journalist in question never actually challenges or follows up. She always dodges the real issues or deflects whenever things get uncomfortable. And that's probably why she's bringing Tim Waltz along for the ride. We all know that Kamala Harris doesn't do so great when explaining very simple concepts, like explaining inflation or explaining the existence of Ukraine as a nation. Ukraine Ukraine is a country on Russia's border, and Russia's a big old mean bully. We all remember that one. So Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So basically, that's wrong. We know she's utterly incompetent and incoherent, and so if ever she gets in a tough position, just default to Tim Waltz. I mean, it's two brains working for one. And so, of course, instead of walking into the dragon's den, instead of going directly into enemy territory like Fox News, for instance, and doing a tough question where they're going to challenge your viewpoints, she remains in this protection bubble. Don't worry, I'm sure Dana Bash is going to take real good care of her in this upcoming interview that's going to be totally controlled, curated, a pre-recorded political stunt meant to do one thing and one thing alone protect Kamala, rather than fulfilling the goal of informing the American people. It's a PR stunt designed to shield Kamala Harris from any accountability. I'm calling it right now. I mean, you guys really think Dana Bash is going to challenge Kamala Harris on her track record on the issue of inflation? I'm sure she's going to ask her about inflation. Well, Kamala, you keep talking about prices, but prices went up when you were vice president. Kamala's going to respond by saying something, well, prices went up because of Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump and the southern border and global warming. And Dana Bash will go, oh, Oh, well, you know, I never thought of it that way, and they'll simply move on. There isn't going to be any actual accountability regarding her failures as vice president. And really, if people are paying attention and they're smart enough, this little pathetic CNN quote-unquote interview shouldn't have an effect at all on the concerns surrounding Kamala Harris's evasive maneuvers, let's call them, since launching this campaign. If anything, it should make it worse. I mean, I really hope people are paying attention to the details. It's obvious that Kamala Harris is hiding from the American people, and this should do nothing to dissuade that perspective. Absolute frickin' weak sauce. Kamala Harris wants credit here, but I give her no such credit. Donald Trump's calling in, doing interviews, showing up, taking questions from the press, and she's doing a pre-recorded two-on-one interview with totally partisan Dana Bash. Okay, like I always say, these people think you're stupid, they treat you as if you're stupid, but hopefully at least the majority aren't this stupid. What an absolute farce. I'm ready to pick this interview apart, because obviously CNN probably won't do their damn jobs. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.